Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's Lunch and Learn webinar. I'm Chanel Cordonnier, the Product Manager for MAP360. And today we're going to be looking at the latest version, uh, version 4.0, and the capabilities and improvements that we've just recently um, put out for MAP360. So a quick agenda for today. We're going to do an overview of MAP360 version 4.0. And then we'll jump into a demonstration and I'll show you some of the new and improved features and we'll create just a couple uh, quick deliverables. And then we'll discuss our free demo and training and we'll jump right into questions. So what is MAP360? It's a scene diagramming and reconstruction software designed to help public safety professionals digitize the narrative analyze the evidence, and present the facts with confidence. We've simplified MAP360, making it easier to use and learn. And we've also added a new online training curriculum that's focused on workflows and will help users become proficient quickly. Our focus for this release was going back to the basics so we can improve the overall foundation for MAP360. We can now continue to build innovative new features and improve the 3D components of the software in future releases. MAP360 4.0 has three different additions. Each addition builds on the next, and as the functionality increases, so does the type of deliverables that can be created. So from entry level to advanced options, our scalable solution allows the product to grow with the user as they adopt new technology and workflows. So with our sketch edition, users can create basic diagrams, floor plans, and evidence reports. And then standard introduces the 3D capabilities, allowing, allowing users the ability to create advanced 2D and 3D diagrams, 3D views or sight lines, animations or fly-throughs, and use the analysis tools to reconstruct the scene. And then we have the Pro Edition, which has the same 3D capabilities as standard, but now the point cloud data can be used for bloodstain pattern analysis, bullet trajectory analysis, witness views, and more advanced diagramming. So MAP360 is still, uh, still has that full-blown CAD engine at its core, but there's now no need to be familiar with that CAD environment to use and learn MAP360. So frequently used tools have been streamlined for maximum productivity. Entities now have intuitive properties and grips, allowing easy customization and editing. And interactive objects, such as the new body poser, scale bar, and intersections, are included and can be, adjust and can be adjusted for any scene. So let's jump in and we'll look at the program. So we can see some of the basic functionality and the new features, and we'll create a few deliverables. The first thing you'll notice about the latest version of MAP360 is the new start page. We can quickly create a new scene with a scene folder for all the drawing files. We'll set the units for the drawing, and the template will read these units and automatically set up the drawing defaults. The updated interface is modern and organized, and we have a new properties panel on the left for easy access. So first we're going to draw a quick sketch of an intersection. So let's use the new feature to insert a four-way intersection and we'll just left click to place it in the middle of the drawing area. We can select the intersection and use these grips to completely customize the intersection for the scene. So each road segment can be rotated or extended and the corner radius can be adjusted as well. You'll notice the properties also display things that can be changed for the intersection or individual road segments. So first let's add a background color and if you select the road segment 
We can also change the line type for the center line. So we're going to make these a single solid yellow instead. So there's additional properties for the road segment or the overall intersection itself. So next we'll insert a couple cross box and we'll just zoom in and place it in the middle of the intersection here. And you'll notice the grips that appear. So we can easily use these grips to place the crosswalk in the scene. And we can also snap perpendicular to the other side of the intersection. And we'll add another crosswalk over here and you'll notice when both crosswalks are selected you get this bounding box around both entities. So now you're able to use these grips to uh, rotate or move both entities together or scale them with the corner grips as one. So we'll adjust this crosswalk and I'll just snap to the edge of the intersection and move it a bit forward. So we also have parking stalls that can be easily placed on the side of the roadway. And once you select them, once again, we have these intuitive grips. So you can extend the, cross or the parking stalls, you can rotate them and make them custom for your scene. Next, we'll add some symbols. So you'll notice that our symbol library has been updated and we've also included quite a few new symbols as well. So I'll we'll add a car symbol into the intersection, making a left-hand turn. And you'll notice the grips also appear on symbols. So the symbols can be resized and positioned very easily in the drawing. And once I have both these vehicles placed, um, I'll just look through my recent symbols and we'll also add a couple stop signs to the intersection as well. So I'm just inserting them directly from here, but they can also be copied in the drawing and um, relocated as well. Now that we have our intersection, we're going to draw some skid marks. So we'll just use a basic line and we'll start at the back of the truck and go straight back and we'll draw another line from back here to the back of the truck. So once you select the line, um, you'll notice you have very intuitive properties provided and we can very easily increase the width of the line to a medium or heavy line width or even set a custom width um, if we'd like to as well. We can easily add arrows and with the arrows you can adjust the arrow size and we're also provided the geometry so this is very useful information for the scene and if you'd like to show the length of the line we can add that and even some interval markings as well and those can be adjusted uh, for the spacing so for now I'll select both lines and we're just going to change the line type to advanced You'll notice a new field appeared and I can change that line type to skid marks. Then we'll adjust the color and we've got uh, skid marks in our scene. So let's also add a couple text labels to the diagram. Uh, so we'll indicate the area of impact and the skid marks. So on the labeling ribbon, We'll select the basic text feature and we'll just pick in the drawing where we want to place our text. You'll notice my default text height is quite small so from the properties panel we can adjust the height along with other properties uh, provided on there as well. We'll add a leader and then the grips can be used to position the text and leader in the diagram. And we'll add one more text for the skid marks. We'll increase the size again and add another leader. 
So if we wanted to quickly represent a building on the side of the road, we can draw a rectangle and once selected, we can use the properties panel to, um, to make that building have a text label and also we can add a fill color or hatching. And previous users of Map360 um, will be noticing how much easier this is now as it took quite a few steps to add hatching and text to a rectangle in the past. So this is just uh, an example of how, our, how we've been simplifying version 4.0. So if we have manual measurements from the scene, we can also do a baseline offset and pick a reference point in the scene and just quickly add distances to this table to insert data points. And the last thing I wanted to show you for this one is the scale bar. So we can quickly insert a scale bar into our drawing and adjust it using the grips uh, to increase the size and dynamically adjust the length of the scale. The first part of this demonstration was to really highlight the basic features and the simplified properties and grips in Map360 version 4.0, which makes it much easier to just create basic diagrams like this. So we're going to create a new scene and the next demo is going to be focusing on the new Register360 ortho slice. So Map360 can import an ortho slice of the point cloud from Reg360 and this DXF file contains the image files of the point cloud. So the image will come into the correct size and location. And this can be done with Map360 Sketch. However, if you are using Map360 Standard, you can also bring in your Evidence Recorder project and you'll notice the line work and the points fall directly in place on top of the image. So this is great for merging different data sets together. And we're going to do one final demonstration, um, and this is for our Map360 Pro users. So we'll start one more scene, and we're going to import an LGS file. So this is just our basic kitchen scene, and I'm quickly going to clip out the ceiling. So we can look at this from a top view and see the contents of the room. So the new feature is called Silhouette Mode and we can toggle this on and it will enhance and highlight the hard edges in the room. So I'll just switch to a grayscale and it really gets quite bright. So from here I'll add one more new feature and that's our body poser. So we'll insert the body poser into the scene and you'll notice the grips again can be used to fully customize this interactive object. So we can position it into the scene and then we can also select each body part and from the properties panel adjust it even further. So I'm going to add another text label and we'll check on the leader as well. And you'll also notice you can update the leader size from the properties as well. So to finish off this quick diagram, we can insert some evidence markers. And I won't add any attachments during this demo, but as you all know, uh, each evidence marker can have uh, photos, videos, audio notes, and other PDFs attached to them. So I'm just going to update that first marker text height. And for the final, we'll just turn off a few of the layers to hide the contents. So really this could be used as a final scale diagram. Um, we can set up the viewports with different views of the scene. So this top one could be your overview and the bottom one could be a 3D view. And that could be your final deliverable. 
However, if you wanted, you could also add walls and doors and various symbols to represent the furniture and appliances in the room as well. So these last three scenes are just a demonstration of some of the new functionality and features in Map360 version 4.0. If you haven't already, uh, make sure you download the demo version of Map360 4.0. It is a fully functional uh, demo for 90 days. And while you try out the demo, take advantage of 90 day access to the online school as well. And the links are provided here and we'll also put them in the chat window so you can access them easily. And be sure to check out our website for more information on Map360. We have related articles, customer reviews, uh, the download link, and upcoming webinars as well. So thank you all for attending today's Lunch and Learn session. And we'll now open it up to questions. Uh, yes, now we got a question here. Is um, the one, someone from a, that used the program before, just curious where the toggle 2D draw mode button is in 4.0. So in 4.0 um, version, or sorry, in 4.0, the 2D draw mode has been removed from the default workspace. Um, it is still available as a command in the program and available on the advanced workspace. Um, so for 2D drawing, they can toggle that on from the advanced workspace or on a toolbar as well. We can show them if they like to um, send in their question or we have their information, we can send them uh, exactly where on the ribbon that's located. Okay, perfect. Uh, just so that uh, just so everybody's aware of on the webinar on the right side, you can use that to ask questions or use the chat as well. Uh, Sorry, it's just uh, we only got a couple of questions here, so I want to make sure everybody's aware of where the, they can ask the questions. Make sure make sure we get that clarified. Okay, we have another one come in here. Is there a way to access symbols from the symbol librarian with no hatch? Uh, so we can still access the symbols with no hatch for vehicles. Um, to get no hatching, you can use change color and remove the color from symbols that way, um, but we no longer provide a duplicate of each symbol with and without hatching. Okay. Uh, and also looking at the vehicle database, are they able to add specific models to their drawings? So if they're looking spe for specific make and model for their vehicle? So we have the vehicle specs um, included in the scene analysis. So we can access uh, different years, makes model, it's all uh, kept current. And then you can insert a block symbol representing the correct dimensions for the vehicle chosen. Um, otherwise, we do have the symbol librarian, uh, which does have some make and model of vehicles, or we can access Collada and search for the symbol that you're looking for in there. Okay. Uh, and someone was working with the QA protocol uh, recently for the twin target poll, uh, but only when the targets came in automatically. Is there any specific settings they should be watching out for or watch out for specific scanners, like for example, the RTC 360? Yeah, so with the um, RTC 360, if you're using Reg 360, currently the target information is not being stored with the LGS file, that is gonna be fixed very shortly here and uh, with the latest Reg360 update, we will be able to recognize and identify targets in the LGS file in Map360. Um, so in the meantime, we do have a new feature as part of the QA protocol where you can manually pick targets. So it's probably best to clip out the twin target poll. So you're just looking at the point cloud points for that target poll and then you can align your view directly looking straight on at the target faces and you can manually pick those targets and we'll recognize those as a twin target poll based on the distance between them. Okay. 
Uh, for the vehicles that people are importing, is there a way to link uh, vehicle sta uh, stats to them? So, for example, if you insert a vehicle, it has information on what make, model, and other information is about that vehicle? Um, so when you bring in custom vehicles, you can uh, update their properties for length, width, height, uh, all of those as well, but you can't link our vehicle specs directly to the symbols. Okay, uh, for the vehicles in there, does that also include European and uh, uh, United States, uh, United Kingdom vehicle uh, templates that they can use? So there are um, some vehicles for European and uh, the UK. We will be working on adding additional symbols going forward, um, and those are next on our list for sure, the, the top models for the European and UK market as well. Okay, uh, the vehicle blocks uh, that match the specs and database, um, is there also an ability to add a center of mass symbol to the blocks? Um, so currently there is not one on there, but we do have a symbol in our library for center of mass, and that can be easily added um, to the vehicle specs block that gets inserted. Okay, uh, between the three different uh, licenses for the for the program, so the Sketch, uh, Standard, and Pro, do the ribbons uh, change at all between those three different versions? So each edition will have the same look and feel. Um, based on what edition you are using, some of the features will be hidden from the ribbon or removed from the program. And um, some of the tabs as well will not be shown. So for example, um, with the sketch ribbon, you can, you'll open it up and you'll see some of the, uh, on the data tab, the point cloud features will be removed. The point cloud and animation ribbons will be um, not accessible. And the analysis tab will also be not accessible. Um, and then with the, standard license, you will get access to the animation ribbon and some more of the 3D functionality and those buttons on the ribbons, uh, but you still will not have access to the point cloud ribbon. And then point cloud, or sorry, uh, Pro will have all features and functions on those default ribbons. And that being said, if a user is trying out the demo license, they can go into the settings dialog and switch their experience level to either beginning or intermediate and that will show what the ribbons will look like for both sketch and standard. Okay, uh, with the QA protocol, uh, can it be used uh, with like points they already have in the drawing or is it only with data imported from a scanner? So we have two separate features. Um, we have the QA protocol with scanners uh, and then we also have just created a new one uh, that just looks at measured data. So if you're using a total station or GPS or even hand measurements and you have that data, those data points in the scene, you can pick those two points and compare them to either known distances or compare them to uh, the NITS twin target pole. If, for example, you measured those target faces with the total station. And then we'll generate a little report that provides the distances and the error between them. Okay, uh, for the body poser, are we able to change like the color or add or remove clothing uh, to the bodies, just kind of customize them some more? Yeah, absolutely. So there is no clothing that we can add to the different symbols, but you can uh, choose each body part and change the color independently. So if you wanted um, a blue shirt, you could change the forearms and the chest to be blue, and that would represent your blue shirt. Um, the properties panel does allow some other customization just by clicking the body parts. And then if you wanted to remove limbs, you could, for example, remove um, the, the arm and it would also remove the, the lower arm and the hand as well. So you can customize it that way. Uh, in this 4.0 version, are users still able to overlay like a Google map or some imagery into their scene? Yeah, absolutely. So we do have the Bing Maps. Um, it's a free subscription. 
that is one thing that's not included with the demo download. Um, but if you have a license, it, it is a free subscription we can add. So we have the Bing Maps, and then we also have a new feature for bringing in, uh, say, a Google Earth image. And if it has a scale on it or a known distance, you can scale that image based on two known points and the distance between them. Uh, so it's easy to bring in any kind of aerial imagery that way. Uh, and then we also have, like I showed, the ortho slice image from Reg360. Okay. Uh, so looking at the program, do you notice that the the, the color scheme is different? Uh, so that has that uh, darker theme there. Is there. Are they able to like to change that theme to a lighter theme or customize it in any way? Yeah. So the new dark theme. Um, is in alignment with the other Leica products. So the Leica products have a similar look and feel. Um, that is the new theme we're going with and we will be going forward with. If a user wants to change, they do have the ability to change the theme. Um, however, the icons will still remain the same color as they currently are. Okay, uh, version 4.0, is it just working on Windows 10 and newer or does, is it still compatible with Windows 7? Yeah, so since we had the uh, notification from Windows or from Microsoft that they will not be supporting Windows 7, we no longer uh, do development or testing with Windows 7. So we are supporting Windows 10 only and I'm not, I can't confirm nor deny if the install will work on a Windows 7 machine. There might be some issues just because we haven't tested with it. Uh, that I can follow up on just being part of the testing team as well. Uh, Math 360 4.0 is Windows 10 only. Uh, Windows, If you try to install on Windows 7, you'll get a message saying that it's not compatible anymore and it won't okay. uh, let you install. Um, for, that, for the aerial images, so like if they bring in like a, a Bing uh, image, for example, can that also include drone or two mosaics? Yeah, absolutely. So we do have um, outstanding UAV image support. So you can bring in extremely large UAV files, uh, TIFF files, or JPEG files. And if you have that associated world file, you can also bring it into the correct scale orientation and position. So it'll line up with other data that you're merging in as well. Uh, the pro version uh, that has point cloud capability, does it also still allow importing uh, other formats like E57 and PTS? Yeah, absolutely. Um, nothing's changed there. We can still import other point cloud formats. Quite a few various uh, point cloud formats can be imported either through Cyclone. Uh, we have the Cyclone import, Jetstream, LGS, and we're working on some other import options there as well. All right, perfect. I I think we're at the end of the questions unless anything else comes in in the next couple of minutes, but. All right, well, I wanna thank everybody for attending today's webinar. And um, if you do have any additional questions or would like to see anything further, please just send me an email and I'd be happy to answer any questions for you. And if you're running to any like technical issues or something's not quite right, uh, right, just make a support ticket and uh, me or one of the guys in the support team will also help you with that as well.